Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make a pop art splatter type amazing image in Photoshop, part one. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find us on Twitter at Flurn. We make learning Photoshop and photography fun. We're taking an image of the wonderful Cat Filipinas. Hi. And we're gonna be turning it into a splatter type portrait today. Where it's really, really cool. So this is gonna be part one. And from this, what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna be cutting our out from our background. We're gonna be doing some prep and I'm gonna show you guys how to make a custom brush out of some splatters that we're gonna be using in part two for the actual effects to all come together. Really, really cool. All right, let's get into it. So this is our image of Cat, and it looks great. Now, for the Im final image that we want to do, we actually want to put a different background on her than she currently has. So the best tool to use, if you want to cut someone out from the backdrop like this, is going to be the pen tool. It, pen tool is really good for creating selections. It's not going to be super perfect when it comes to all these little hairs and things like that, but because of the type of image that we're creating, I don't really care so much about the hair. So I'm gonna go show you guys how to use the pen tool, and um, it's a really, really helpful tool. I think you're gonna like a lot. So what we're gonna do is hit P for the pen tool. Now, the pen tool makes what's called paths. So those are here in these paths, and layers are basically what's gone on, on the layers. All right, so with the pen tool, I'm gonna click right outside of our image, right here, and then we want something that's basically gonna like, kinda come up and curve there. So if I just click right over here, we have a straight point. But if I keep holding it down and I start to drag it around, you can see that I'm able to create a curve that's pretty much in the same shape as her shoulder there, which is really, really cool. So this is what the pen tool is used for. It's for cutting people out and creating curves and things like that. All right, let's move up here. Now I'm gonna show you that we're gonna hold down Alt or Option. I'm gonna click on this point right here and move this up there. And that's basically gonna say like, the next time I click, it's gonna go ahead and lead it up in that direction. So I'm gonna click up right here and you can see this guy just kind of leads that up in that direction. If I hold down the command key and move this around, you can see like what a difference that makes. So it's just like kind of like saying, yeah, go up in that direction. Okay, so now we're here and I'm gonna just see, we basically need to go all the way around the brim of our hat. So I'm gonna try going part way. We'll just click right here and drag. So the big thing you wanna do is click and drag. There we go. And it's, it may look like I'm amazingly good at like, how did you get that? But it's not hard, it really isn't. You just like, and that looks pretty good. All right, and the cool thing about the pen tool is that you can always change these after the fact. Like after you made them, I'm gonna show you how to change them. Okay, so let's do the same thing here. Click and drag, and then hold down the control of the command key and grab one of these things. There we go. And then I'm just gonna come right over here. We're getting ambiguous, or ambitious. <laughs> We're getting ambiguous. Nice one, yay. I make talk good on internet. There we go. All right, let's bring this down and zoom right into here. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option so we can get a little bit of an angle there. There we go. Come right down here, Alt or Option again. So if you wanna angle, you're gonna to wanna to hold Alt or Option. And if you just wanna like a continuous curve, that's the time when it's, um, you wanna hit Control or Command. There we go. All right, and we'll just cook right down here and kind of finish that off. And that's good enough, you don't need to close it. So if you did wanna move any of these things, all you have to do is go to your paths. If you like didn't have your path, you can click on your work path, okay? And then as long as you're in your path tool, hold down the command key and then click on any one of these points and you can still move any of these things around, including this guy. So this is done after your path is made. You can like zoom in and just check for accuracy and stuff like that. So uh, just a really cool way to cut someone out really simply. Okay, so now that we have this path made, what we're gonna do is right click in here and I'm gonna go to make selection. Okay, so we're making a selection of our subject there and here on our background layer, what I'm gonna do, let's just turn this into a regular layer. I don't, I don't mind if we just start to use our background layer. Uh, to do this, you can double click on it and then just hit okay and it'll turn into a regular layer. Okay, so we have our selection, we have our layer, we're gonna click on our layer mask tool 
and now we have pretty much a blank background. So in this case, you could composite her. Like if you wanted her on a different background, you could totally do that. Or in this case, I'm just gonna hit Command and the new layer to make a new layer underneath. Hit D for my default color and Alt or Option Delete, which fills with your foreground color. So, or you could just put her on a pure white or a pure black background. So she's cut out, you can put whatever background you want, including colors and things like that. And we're gonna be using colors in just a minute. But for now, this is what we want. Okay, so we've got our subject and she's cut out and looking really good. So the next thing what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to create a custom brush that we're gonna use in just a second to actually like splatter on our subject. So that's first thing. Now let's create this brush. All right, let's hit F for full screen. And this is actually just a splatter that we, uh, we just got a thing of paint and splattered it on white paper and photographed it. And uh, this is what this is. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command L for our, lo our levels adjustment layer. And we're gonna bring up our white point just a little bit there we go, because anything that's white uh, becomes invisible when you create a brush, and anything that's black becomes visible. All right, I'm gonna also hit Shift Command U because we are trying to make a brush here and it really doesn't matter uh, if it's black or white or in color, that, that's not important at all. All right, now I'm gonna grab my white paint brush and we're gonna start to paint white right outside of the edges here. And the other, the reason for this is we want to make sure that the edges are totally white. Whenever you're creating a brush, you want your edges to go completely to white. If not, you're actually going to see those edges in your brush and it's just going to look really, really bad. Okay, that looks good. Let's grab another level adjustment layer just so I can make those darks a little bit darker. There we go. And you can see if I go too far, you can see with the white area, I miss this right over here. So we want to make sure we're painting white all the way up to the edge. And let's paint it over there as well. All right, something like that looks pretty good. We're going to close this down and we're good to go. So now I'm ready to make this a brush. I'm going to go to edit and then define brush preset. And this is going to be a big brush. It's 3,957 pixels large. It's a huge brush. If you guys are using like Photoshop CS6 or CC, it'll it will allow you to make a brush this big. But if you're using like CS5 or something like that, it limits the brush size to like 800 pixels or something like that. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller because we don't need the brush to be this big. So we'll just go to image, down to image size, and then our width, let's just put it 1200 pixels. There we go. That's a more than big enough brush. Now we'll go to edit, define brush preset, and you can see it's much smaller. All right, and we're just gonna call this splatter. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and switch back to our other document now, and I'm gonna create a new layer and show you guys how the brush works. So our splatter brush, basically if we paint with white, and I just kinda click around, now we're painting that exact splatter all over our image, which is really, really cool. All right, let's grab a red, there we go, so you guys can kinda see the difference there. So that's our splatter. Let's hit Command A and then hit Delete just to clear it. So that's what the splatter looks like on its own. Now if we open up, we get a window and then down here to brush, we can open up a lot of cool options. We can click on where it says shape dynamics. I'm going to turn our size jitter all the way up. So this means some of my splatters are going to be larger and some of them are going to be smaller. You can turn your control on to pen pressure, which is like the harder you press, the larger these will be. But I'm just going to go straight to off. So some of these are going to be smaller, some of these larger. And I don't have control over that. Minimum diameter, let's pull down. Angle jitter is just going to make some of these like right side up and upside down. And what this really winds up doing is it's creating a lot of very like random patterns, which is exactly what we want. Okay, the next thing we can do, we, I, sometimes you want scattering, but in this case, I don't really need scattering. I'm okay just like clicking around and things like that. That works totally well for me. But we do want to do something that we normally don't, and this is the color dynamics. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the hue jitter on. And what this is going to do is every time I click, it's going to make slightly different hue. Now, I've got my red color, so if I have my hue jitter relatively low, it's going to make colors that are close to red. Let's just hit Command A and hit Delete. So you can see it's like red and then a slightly pink and then a slightly yellowy red. The larger I go, the farther and farther away it's going to get from red. So you can see we've got, we threw a yellow in there and stuff like that. And the farther and farther I go, now we've got some other colors yet again. Okay. So you, we're going to find a, like a nice balance in there when we're basically covering our subject, which is cat right here. Uh, we're going to be covering her, let's bring our minimum diameter up just a bit. 
we're going to be covering her with paint splatters. Okay, so just a really cool way to make a custom brush and have it load a different color every single time you do this. And we're actually going to be including this brush uh, on Flurn.com. So if you guys want to check it out, head over to Flurn.com and you can download this exact brush. All right. So this is the end of part one, guys. Basically, we just created our brush and uh, we cut our subject out. In the next part, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to restrict this color just to the lights and the darks of Cat, and we're gonna be painting on her, and then we're gonna be bringing in a whole new backdrop and making this like totally amazing. So we did all the groundwork now, and then in our next episode, we're gonna do the fun part. Gosh, I'm excited. It's gonna be fun. Thanks so much for watching Flirn, guys. I hope you enjoy this video using the pen tool as well as creating a custom Brush. If you guys like what's going on at Flurn, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you anything, and we make amazing videos just like this one. You can tell us about it in a comment down below and share it with your friends if you guys want to do that. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. It's cool. Hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Flurn you guys later. Bye, everyone. Flurn you later. I'll flurn you later. Flurn, flurn, and flurn you later. Flurn and you later. All right, that one is done.